community Good Friday service. And uh, we've got a great problem of having to put more chairs out. So yes. <laughs> it's a great way to start the morning. I'm Pastor Rodney. I'm from the Full Gospel Church. This is... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Dave and Krista from Mission Thando. And uh, Michelle and Pastor Matt, coming down the aisle here, are from one church. We have Wendy from the United Church and Father Chris from the Catholic Church. Our Lady... Church of Our Lady. Church of Our Lady. There we go. <laughs> oh, you're just waving. Okay. <laughs> Again, we just want to welcome you here today, and we're thankful that you came out, and uh, despite the snow and all that, we pray that you have a great time of worshiping, and just uh, we want to focus in this morning on, on the death of Christ, and so um, let's just enter into uh, what the songs have to say, and then what Pastor Matt has to say. The, the scripture that Wendy's going to be reading and, and the prayers that Father Chris is going to be bringing. So we hope that this will be a very edifying time for you and and that uh, things will go so well that we'll just keep doing this every year. Amen. Let's bow with you for a word of prayer. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have together to come as the body of Christ. Lord, we might be a number of congregations, but we are the body of Christ coming together just as you wanted it to. And Lord, we pray today that you would open up our hearts to worship you. Lord, that we wouldn't hold anything back. And Lord, that, that the words would uh, be planted deep into our hearts. And so Lord, we give you this time and we pray that it would be used for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, we're going to open up with a song that is fairly new to all of us, I think, um, but the words just hit perfectly with Good Friday. And um, as we kind of are leading worship, feel free to worship however you would like. If, you, if that means you need to sit and stay seated, that's perfectly fine. If you want to stand, feel free to stand. We just want this time to just be all about Jesus and worshiping him, and so you do that however freely you need to.
This morning as you came in, you were probably handed one of these cards, and I just want to let you all know that you're invited to another gathering, similar to this one, but on a much larger scale, June 7th and 8th in Regina at Mosaic Stadium. We're gathering all the denominations together to worship Jesus, and so I just want to extend that invitation. These are free tickets. There's no charge to come, and this morning we're going to take up an offering, and so Father Chris and Wendy are gonna come around and the offering goes to cover the cost of the building and then if there's any extra, we're gonna give it to a local charity. So we just wanna invite you all to participate in that. And then kids, we have a video that's gonna come on the screen here for you as they're taking up the offering. You guys can enjoy that. Jesus had done some amazing things while he was living. Like lots of miracles. That's right. He'd shown everyone that God the Father was very loving and good and powerful. He had also promised that the kingdom of God was near. He'd given everyone a taste of that kingdom through those miracles. What's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is when the whole world will be made new again, the way God had always wanted it to be. Jesus promised that someday in the kingdom of God there will be no sin or sadness or sickness or death. What is sin again? Sin is when we ignore God and go our own way. Sin is when we say, I don't care what you say, I'm going to do it my way. And remember, because God is good and sin is bad, the price we pay for our sin is being apart from God. Oh, so in the kingdom of God, there will be no sin, or sadness, or sickness. In the kingdom of God, there will be nothing to be afraid of, not even death. But Jesus had just died. Ah, so it seemed like none of those promises were coming true. But that was not the case. Really? What do you mean? You see, something more amazing was happening that Jesus' enemies didn't realize. When he died on the cross, Jesus took all of our sin on himself. He did? You see, since our sin turns us away from God, there can be no sin in the kingdom of God. So, Jesus had to fix the problem of sin. And he did that by dying on the cross? Yes. By dying on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Yours, mine, everyone's. Wow! Jesus really loves us. He sure does. But... Another question? What about all the things that he said about the kingdom? I still don't get it. If Jesus was dead, 
how could any of those promises come true? That's a really good question. With an even better answer. Because he didn't stay dead. We are so thankful that God sent his son to die on the cross for us to have um, life with him in heaven. And so as we continue to sing, um, just worship however you would feel. We're going to... Um, we're going to start with forever. <clears throat> Feel free to stand if you like.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. God, we thank you for that hope. That God, we celebrate or we we mourn that you died on the cross, but yet at the same time we have hope in you, Jesus, and we are so thankful for that. So thankful.
Sisters, let us now pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, although you were crucified on this day, you have been raised from the dead and now draw us alongside us as we offer our prayers to God for the world, for our churches, and for all whom Jesus died on the cross. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to respond after each of our prayers with the Lord's crucified Lord, hear us. Together, crucified Lord, hear us. We pray for the universal church on this Good Friday, that all who are disciples of Jesus will be given the grace and the strength that they need to walk in the way of the cross by speaking words of love and truth in places of hatred and where lies are told. We pray to the Lord. Together we say, crucified Lord, hear us. We pray that the Lord Jesus will draw all people to himself, who is the source of eternal reconciliation and salvation. Together we pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear us. We pray for the communities in which we live, we work, and we worship that bonds of love within our families and between our friends and neighbors will be healed where there are brokenness and strengthened so that we might give a good Christian witness to all we encounter. We pray to the Lord and together we say, crucified Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who are experiencing their own Good Friday darkness, that is all who suffer pain in body or mind, that they will be healed by Jesus, who still bears the marks of his pain and honors the promise of complete restoration and resurrection in the life to come. Together we pray, crucified Lord, hear us. Let us pray now in silence for our own personal needs and for those for whom we have promised to pray or those whom we know need our prayers.
Together we pray, crucified Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, remember as we gather today at the foot of the cross on which Jesus died, we offer you these our prayers in hope, trusting in your promise to hear us and in your power which raised Jesus from the dead. Let your heavenly grace, your mercy, your love, and your peace surround us all so that those whom we have prayed for and for the prayers that we have asked, you will answer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. of scripture this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verses 31 to 35. For the inside of the tabernacle, make a special curtain of finely woven linen. Decorate it with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. Hang this curtain on gold hooks attached to four posts of acacia wood. Overlay the posts with gold and set them in four silver bases. Hang the inner curtain from clasps and put the Ark of the Covenant in the room behind it. This curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Then put the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of the Ark of the Covenant inside the most holy place. Place the table outside the inner curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and place the lampstand across the room on the south side. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 15, verses 33 to 39. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he, exp he explained, this man truly was the son of God. Curtain. The first thing that pops in my head is, what are they hiding? 
what's back there and why don't they want me to see it, right? And as a kid, it was my mission in life to try to figure out what was behind the curtain, right? Mom and Dad had to keep an eye on me because I was sneaking off trying to figure out what is back there and why don't you want me to see it? If we go to a, a dessert theater, behind the curtain is the actors and the props. If we go to a hospital, the curtains are used to separate the patients. But what is going on in this tabernacle? Moses is told as it's built and the curtain goes out there to place the Ark of the Covenant behind this curtain. The Ark of the Covenant represented the very presence of God. And what the curtain was to serve, its purpose was to protect the people. See, since Adam and Eve and since they ate the fruit, sin had entered every single life. And so now there is this barrier because sinful man could not approach God without consequence. Moses, God tells Moses that if anyone sees me because I am sinless, because I am pure, they will surely die. And so the curtain served as a means of protecting the people, but it was a physical representation of the sin barrier that every single person was experiencing. So every time the nation moved, this curtain went up. This barrier went up as a reminder that we do not approach God as one of our homies, as one of our brothers, but we approach him as the creator God, and he is set apart. He is different, and because of this sin issue that each of us was dealing with, we couldn't approach him. And as time went on, each time the tabernacle was replaced by a temple, the temple was torn down, replaced by another temple. By the time we get to Jesus in the second reading, Herod the king had created this great big temple, and at the front of it was still the curtain. But they said the curtain was 30 feet wide, 60 feet tall, and as thick as a man's hand. They said if it got wet, it took 300 men to move this curtain. I've heard of really good blackout curtains. That is a little extreme. Because you're not just blocking the light at this point, you're blocking everything. This curtain hadn't been removed. It was still there. And the people saw it every time they walked into the, te the temple. And in the second reading, we read that as Jesus is hanging on the cross, and he cries out, it is finished, and he breathes his last, the curtain in this temple is torn in two from top to bottom. Now imagine the effort it would take to tear this curtain completely. The width of a man's hand, 60 feet long. The only explanation was that God himself had torn it open. And the tearing of this curtain was the representation of what Jesus had just accomplished. Jesus had just taken away the sins of the world. Jesus had just taken away every barrier. You and I, because of what Jesus has done, have full access to, G to God in his presence. We can hear his voice. We can have a relationship with him. Glory to God because of what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. But do you know what the Pharisees did? As soon as this whole season had passed, they put the, temple, they put the curtain back up. The Pharisees went out of their way to put the curtain back up. They put the barrier back up. The problem is that humanity has, hasn't stopped putting up that barrier between them and God. How many of you have invited somebody to church and they said, the response is, oh, I couldn't go to church. If I did, I'd burst into flames. <laughs> or I get struck by lightning, right? Maybe you've heard that. Maybe some of you, you don't have to raise your hand or anything. Maybe you, some of you have said that. Maybe some of you believe that. And the reason you're here is because this isn't a church, this is a hall, it's a safe place. You could come and check it out because there's something about the church. You can't come because I'm too bad, I've done too much. I, I, I can't go into a church. You've put up a barrier. Maybe some of you have been going to church for a long time and you made some mistakes. Or maybe you've tried to go to church in the past and people know the mistakes, they know your story. And the overwhelming feeling was you weren't welcome. 
that somehow your mistakes are too great, for somehow your personality was a problem. For whatever reason, someone gave you the impression that you weren't welcome at our church. Someone put up a barrier between you and God. And that's you this morning. I just want to say I'm really sorry. Part of the reason we wanted to gather here at the hall was because we know that that's somebody's story. We know that some of us have stories about churches and we can't go into certain buildings and we can't go because something has happened. On behalf of all the churches, all the leadership, I'm sorry for that. But the biggest barrier that I think we've started taking down today is the barrier that flies between churches. How many of you have been talking to somebody and discover that they are also a believer and you tell them what church and the response is, oh, <laughs> you go to that church, I'll pray for you, right? Or something along those lines. And it's always interesting. Most stops that I've been, this is the fourth church I've been a part of. Actually, I came back, so third one, first one again. Anyways, um, most churches I've had a privilege and honor of pastoring in, we were, we were that church. Oh, you go to that church. Oh, you, we sh you should really come to our church. Why? What's the difference? And we have, you are a part of something historic this morning. Never, as far as I know, if I'm wrong on this, you can please come and correct me. Never in our community have the churches put aside our differences and come together for a service like this. Never in all the years. This is my eighth year being in this town, and it never happened any time before this. Yeah. Because your pastors and your leadership recognize that there's more that unites us than divides us. There's more that brings us together than keeps us apart. That what Jesus accomplished on the cross, that his resurrection, that the Holy Spirit that dwells within each of us, these things unite us. The mission of the church unites us. And so we, Rod said we want to maybe do this every year. I want to do more. I want to see us do more things together. I want to tear down more barriers. Because our community and our region needs the church to be unified. Last I checked when I read this Bible, and I've read a, a lot, and I've read the original language, I don't see God coming back for the Pentecostal bride and the, the Catholic bride and the... Jesus is coming back for one bride, one body, and we're all going to spend eternity together. We might as well start getting along now. <laughs> or it's going to be a long eternity. Um, so good things are happening. The church is united. And I know that God is going to move in great and amazing ways because of the huge accomplishment that this morning really is. Yeah. But there's more to be done. And this morning I wonder if you're here, if there's barriers that Jesus needs to tear down in your life. Because we serve a barrier-breaking God. Jesus didn't stop at the curtain. He didn't stop at the sin barrier. Jesus heals the sick. He has continued to restore relationships. He has continued to forgive sin. He has continued to do what only he could do. And this morning I wonder if you're here and you've got some barriers in your life that need to come down. Maybe you're here and you've seen someone you haven't seen in a long time and, and all those memories came back and all those hurts came back and, and, and that unforgiveness started to seep in and you haven't had that feeling in such a long time and Jesus wants you to know that he wants to break that bond. He wants to break that barrier. He wants to restore forgiveness. He wants to restore that relationship. Maybe some of you are here and you feel like there's that barrier between you and God. You haven't had a good prayer time. You had a really hard time singing with us this morning. You just have this feeling that there is something between you and God. You really want it to go. You just don't know how. 
maybe you're here and you're seeing all the churches together and you're really uncomfortable because for whatever reason. And I could go on and on all morning and I'm not going to do that to you. But as I talk about barriers, you I know that the spirit is stirring it in you. Your mind instantly went to that spot. Your heart instantly started feeling those feelings. And so this morning, I want to invite you to not ignore those feelings, to not ignore the opportunity that you have. There's no other time throughout the year you've got all of us pastors and all of us spiritual leaders together ready and willing to pray with you. Maybe some of you, you wander from God and you just feel this tug to come back. Maybe some of you have never made that commitment to follow Jesus ever. Let me tell you, friend, today is the best day to make that change. Today is a great day to pray that prayer, to come and to be prayed for and to make that decision to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It doesn't make life easier. But every challenge, every struggle, everything you go through, you no longer go through it alone. God's spirit comes and dwells within you and every challenge, every struggle, everything you face in life, you now do it with the power of the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. I don't know about you, but maybe there's some dead things in life that need to come back to life and you need the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do. Whatever your story is, whatever your struggle, whatever your barrier, this morning, I want to invite you to come and get prayer. I get the team to come back up, and they're going to lead us in one more song. Um, I can be short-winded if I have to be. <laughs> but we got lots of space up here. And we got nothing but time this morning. If you're here this morning and you need some prayer, you need someone to just talk to you, whatever it is that you need, don't miss this opportunity. I mean, we'll be back at it Sunday. You can always come see us on Sunday, but there's something special that's happening here today. So don't miss the opportunity to come and be prayed for. Don't miss this opportunity to come and talk to somebody. I'm going to pray. I'm going to hand it over to the team. I'll be up here. I'll take the mic off because that's happened. We don't need that. Um, I would love to pray with you. I would love to just take that time to just go before our Heavenly Father and just say, God, I need you to move. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do ask. I ask you, Jesus, that you would meet us in this place. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak to every heart. In the name of Jesus, I resist, I pray against the temptation to say, I'll do it next time. I'll do it later. You don't know the days, the hours that God has appointed to you. You don't know if there's going to be a later. So I encourage you. Jesus, I pray that you would draw people to yourself. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to every heart, that you would shine light on the things in our lives that need to be removed. Whether it's a person, whether it's a hurt, whatever it is, Jesus, you heal all wounds. By your stripes, we are healed because you said on that cross, it is finished. It's done, the victory is won, and we can walk in the freedom found in you alone. God, I thank you for the historic moment we're having this morning, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move, you would inspire, you would do what only you can do. And as we go, that we would be different. The church at Carlisle would be different. We would be united, we'd be on mission, and we could do what you've called us to do. God, speak to us this morning as we close with our song. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, if you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing this last song. If you need prayer, please don't hesitate to come.
Jesus for who you are. God, you love us so much. And we just thank you and we praise you for that. God, as we um, gather together and um, have a meal together and we chat and we talk, Lord, I pray that those that those um, 
dividers or those those boundaries or those barriers that we put up, um, Lord, would just be, come down. That we would enjoy each other's company. That we would um, that you would bless this food, bless the hands that have taken the time to prepare all the all the food, the sandwiches and the desserts and um, even the coffee, Lord. I thank you for everyone. I thank you that we can gather together as one and um, just worship you and talk life to each other. And we thank you and praise you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. We are probably going to take some time to maybe add a couple more tables. Um, so if you guys could help with that. Or, um, and I think everything is mostly set up. So you just kind of help yourself. Uh, grab a friend or a family or somebody and just chat. And uh, happy Easter to all. And thank you so much, you guys, for coming out. This has been, this has been amazing. So thank you.